if you are converting media from one type to another, you're usually doing this in an OSI layer one. You're doing this at the signaling layer of that media connection. So usually you're not worrying about MAC addresses. You're not worrying about IP addresses. There's no switching involved. There's no routing involved. We are simply taking one type of signal and we're reconstructing it into a different type of signal and sending it over a different type of media. A common use of this, for instance, might be taking a copper cable, which can only go a certain amount of distance, and extending how long it can really go, because you would convert it to a fiber connection, which obviously can go for kilometers. And on the other end, you can convert it back to copper and effectively use single copper connections on both sides. Neither one of those equipment pieces on the either side of this know that there's fiber in between. They think the devices are sitting right next to each other with that copper cable. But what you've now done is extend the distance from one end of that link to the other simply by converting the signal and putting it on a fiber right in the middle. Another reason to convert media might be that you just don't have the right type of connection. You may have been given a fiber connection by a service provider, but all of your equipment only has copper connections. So obviously, you have to convert from the fiber connection into a copper connection and then plug in to your device. These types of connections where you are converting from fiber to copper or you're converting from copper to fiber almost always need power to make that happen. Your copper signals are electrical, and there's no way to take light off of a fiber and somehow create enough power to now generate those electrical signals across that copper connection. And because of that, we also have to keep in mind and worry about providing power to this particular media converter. It's just one more thing that can go wrong. So if you're troubleshooting your network and you're having a connectivity problem, just keep in mind that you have to make sure that your fiber converter is also getting the power that it needs. There are many different manufacturers of devices that can take fiber connections and convert them to copper. And you'll need different types of media converters depending on the type of fiber that you're using. You may be going from a single mode fiber to copper, or you may be going from multi mode fiber to copper. Those are two different kinds of media converters to make that happen. As I mentioned earlier, you have to have power to make this type of conversion occur. So these digital signals that you're putting over that copper connection will require power and usually in in the back of these converters is a connection to plug in a DC power connection so that you can then take that signal and reconvert it and put it over that copper connection. You're almost always using this type of connection because you either don't have a port that you need or you need to really extend the distance of traditional copper cables. And as we're spreading out our networks, we're making them more redundant, we're spreading out and having different data centers in different locations, you may be in a position where you must extend a copper copper connection from one building to another, from one city to another. And in those environments, you may need just a piece of fiber in the ground so that you can put media converters on both sides to convert to fiber on one end and convert it back to copper on the other. An increasingly common media conversion is taking place in our homes. We now have cable providers that used to bring us a coax cable and they plug it right into our house and we would plug that into our television. But now as their business has changed to provide us with telephone communication, our cable television, our digital signals for our internet connection, they're now simply bringing a piece of fiber right up to your house. And on the side of your home is a conversion box that will take that signal right from the fiber that they're bringing in and then convert it over to a copper connection that then becomes the coax that all of the other devices in your home are accustomed to using. And because they have that fiber in the ground that goes right to your house, they can provide you with amazing amounts of bandwidth. And that type of technology, although it's one that is emerging, is rapidly growing. And we're seeing that being put in so many different places these days. We may also be in a situation where we have to convert between fiber types. We might need to convert between single mode fiber to multi mode fiber or multi mode fiber to single mode fiber. And to do that, we can simply use a single media converter that has two fiber connections in it that will convert between those two types. One thing that's nice about fiber to fiber conversion is you don't have those power requirements that you have with copper. So in those scenarios, we're simply inside of this converter converting the light using mirrors and using prisms. We don't have to worry about any type of high power. So usually these don't have a power connection associated with them. And that's one less thing you have to worry about when you're troubleshooting your network. 
using any of these conversion types, we can take almost any network signal and convert it to any other type of network signal to make sure you get the type of connectivity that you need in your data center.